Hi there, this is Jeff from jeffmobile.com. Today I'd like to show you a tutorial of some really exciting new things you can do with Ambisonic Sound. If you haven't heard of Ambisonic Sound before, it's when you are recording all around you and wherever you look when you're watching the video, in say a 360 video in VR, the sound appears to come from the direction where you're looking. So it's kind of doing a real-time mix of the sound to create more immersion in a 360 video. The effects of this are great if you're using VR to watch a 360 video that you made. When you look around in your headset, the sound will appear to be naturally coming from yeah, the different angles as if you're looking in that direction. It's really cool. And the tool that we're going to be using today to do that is this little recorder device called the Zoom H2N which can record, it has five microphones built into this top part here, and it records in surround sound. And if you upgrade the firmware of this Zoom H2N to the latest version, 2.0 or higher, it allows you to add spatial audio setting into your uh, recordings, which works very well with cameras such as this one here, which is the uh, 360 camera called the Samsung Gear 360. So this camera, I've already have another tutorial on how to get the footage off here and edit you edit that using Premiere. So if you're not sure how to do that, I'll put the link below. But this tutorial here I'm doing now assumes that you've already got the footage from this camera, you've already stitched it together, and you want to now also process the audio and how to capture the audio with the Zoom H2n. So for Zoom H2n, the setup is basically you turn it on and as you notice when it booted up it said firmware was version 2.0. I'm going into the menu and go to the record settings and then I want to select rec format, recording format. Make sure you're set up at 48 kilohertz and 24 bit. That's the best quality setting that's supported by the spatial audio. If you have 2.0 firmware or higher, you'll get an option at the bottom called spatial audio. Go and turn that on. It'll have to take a moment and now you can see there's... Check, check, testing. The three microphones listed there, the Omni and and as, as on the top you see both lights are lit up. So that you're in spatial audio mode. So let's say that I've now recorded a video using spatial audio mode. I want to get that off the recorder. Make sure you aim the orientation of the um, screen away from the front. So the side without the screen faces the front. I'll copy that file from the recorder and paste it into my desktop um, folder. I also have the 360 video file there. So first of all, we'll open up the spatial audio in with Audacity, which is a free tool, and you'll see that it actually is a four channel file, which is correct. The third channel is empty, which is expected. If I open up the 360 video, you can use um, Windows Media Player or something to open that up. You can see it's already been stitched together, so it's, it's that uh, equirectangular uh, projection. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is get a couple of tools that we'll need to do this work. So the first one is called FFmpeg, so I'll search for FFmpeg on Google, go to download, and I'll, since I'm using Windows, I'll download the Windows version. I'll grab the Windows package, click download, I'll save that in the same folder that we're working in right now, so we have everything in one place. Click save, I'll create a new folder first of all, put this in a folder called FFmpeg, and save it into there. And that is now downloading. And as soon as that's downloaded, you can go in there and right click extract all and extract all the, all the files. A window pops up, you can just close that extra window. Now you go into that new folder that appeared all the way into the bin folder and grab the file FFmpeg, go copy and paste that into the main folder that you're working with, with the other files. That's way it's easier to work with. Next thing we want to do is get the Google 360 metadata injector tool, metadata tool. So search for Google 360 metadata tool, go to the first thing comes up, which is YouTube help. Step number two says prepare upload. There's a link to this uh, metadata app um, for Windows. Click that and download that also to the same folder. Create a folder called 360 metadata tool and save it in there. Click save, it downloads very well, and then open up that folder, same thing, extract all, extract, and close this window that pops up, then go into the folder, and just cut that out of there, and paste it into the root folder where we have everything else. 
Now this is something I've given you a bit of a hint. I've there's this file called that has some instructions called tip.txt. I'm going to put the contents of this file in the YouTube description so you can copy it out of there. And I'll first thing I'm going to do is create a batch file. So create a new text document and call it process.bat. If you can't see the file extensions, you may need to enable file extensions in Windows Explorer. Go right click and go edit. And a batch file lets you execute some commands. So paste in the ffmpeg command in there and click go save. So once we have that batch file created, it'll be a lot easier to um, process the video that we need to do to join the video file with the audio file. But the next thing we want to do is actually edit um, the video in Premiere. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. But as you see, the batch file contains commands for FFmpeg. And the video file it's going to combine is called video input. It will combine it with vid sound input and creates a file called finalvideo.mov. So we'll do that after we've created the video in Premiere. Open up Premiere and go over to the folder, create a new project, and you can call the project whatever you like. Click OK once that's entered the name. And for sequence settings, since we're using 360 video, I've already set up a preset for my camera called Gear 364K. More information about that can be found in my other tutorial listed below on how to edit 360 video in Premiere. Create a name for the sequence there and click OK. Now once we have the sequence created, I'll import both the audio file and the video file that we want to edit. So go find that in the window here and import both the audio file and the video file. Next thing we want to do is try to sync up these files. You'll notice if I drop the 360 video file into the timeline that we get, uh, it appears already stitched in the window there, which is great. And that just has the regular audio from the camera attached to it. If you go to the other file, the audio file from the Zoom, go to audio settings, you can see there are four channels there, which is perfect. And I'll just drop that into the timeline, delete all the extra tracks. We don't need those extra tracks, so you can delete the other ones. And now I'll expand the first um, first channel of that audio. And you can see the waveform. Now we want to line up the waveform so it matches. So I'll go to show audio time units, which allows you to be more precise. And I'll turn off snapping. I'll zoom in by pressing plus key. And then I'll drag the audio waveform so they match up. And I'll just do some fine tuning to make sure it's really quite exact. If you want to test it that it's okay, you can just play the audio a little bit to see if there's any echoing sounds. If there is, then you can just adjust it a little bit more. But when I tried it here, it was fine. So that's good. And now the audio is synced up. I want to go to the, uh, we'll expand all the tracks. You can see, uh, yes, that's correct. The third track is empty, which is as desired. And I will go up to the first track and actually turn off the audio. That little, um, speaker icon at the beginning is whether that track is enabled or not and that obviously we want to turn off the camera's audio. First of all, I'll adjust the audio gain on the 360 track, the IMP Sonic track. Set the gain max peak to some number close to, close to zero and now you can see that the audio has gain has increased proportionally in all the tracks. And then we'll do some trimming. So I'll turn back off the show audio time units. I'm working in video units. I'll do a cut and delete the first part and just line it all up at the beginning. Just some basic video editing tips in Premiere. I also want to trim off the end part of the audio. So I'll go to the end, do a cut and remove the last bit there as well. So this is pretty much good to go. Um, we're ready to export, but exporting is in two steps. We first need to export the video track with no sound and then export the uh, sound separately in each four channels. So first of all, we'll save a file name. We'll put it in the same folder as we were working in. We want to make sure that um, export audio is actually turned off. So go to the audio, export audio should be unchecked. If you go to the audio tab, it should be empty, which is correct. And now we just go uh, queue that up, add to the queue and run the media creator. 
while that's processing the video, we also want to export four different audio tracks. The idea is we're going to export four audio tracks, for one for each channel, and then we're going to combine it into a single WAV file using Audacity, and then we'll use FFmpeg to mix that audio file with the video file. So if you just didn't see what I did there, I just selected it so that only the first channel of spatial audio was selected, and now I'm going to export that using the settings shown here to a single WAV file, make sure 32-bit float is selected and mono. And we'll um, create a folder called tracks, go in there and I'll call this track 01. So we know that's the first track. Click save and click export. I'll do the same thing, I'll unselect track one and make sure only track two is selected of audio and do the same thing, export media, and make sure that the file name is correct, so track 02, and we still have mono and 32-bit float selected, export that, great, do the same thing with the third track, I want to just enable just the third track to be exporting, and export media, and enter the name, so track 03, click save, and go export. Do so finally with the fourth track, select the fourth track only and export media, name the file track 04. Click save and export. Okay, so now let's go into Audacity and make this audio file um, combined to a, to a single wave file, a multi-channel wave file, which we will combine with the resulting video file. Go into Audacity, drop in tracks one through, one through four. They should show up in order, so you can check on the left side that it does have the correct track name and track ordering, one, two, three, four, all the way from the top. And the, again, the third track should be blank, which is correct. And in order to allow Audacity to export multi-channel wave, you gotta go into import export settings and enable use custom mix and click, make sure you use custom mix is selected. Now go file, Go export audio, and before you do that, let's get the file name we want to find out what the file name is. If we edit that process that we created, the file name we want to create for the audio is called sound-input.wave, so copy that text out and go export audio in Audacity, name the file, once you find the folder, name the file sound-input.wave. Make sure that 32-bit float PCM, and you can click OK. Make sure there's four channels being exported. So that will create the audio file called soundinput.wave. So as I mentioned before, the uh, process.bat, it requires soundinput.wave and uh, a video input.mp4. So let's, uh, we just have the exported video from Premiere working. So let's go in and open that process.bat, video input mp4 so let's rename that exported file as video input.mp4 so now we have the two input files we need and so now it's just a matter of running the um, batch file but before we do that let's make sure that the sound input is correct let's open it up in audacity and we should see there's four tracks again as we had before and the third track is empty which is correct so let's just run the process.bat and you'll see that it generates a file called final video uh, .mov. So double click that, the batch file runs, that makes use of FFmpeg. You see a, a video called final underscore video dot MOV that it appeared. You actually have to run a metadata tool on it. Uh, so open up the spatial metadata injector, select final video dot MOV, open that in the spatial media metadata injector. Make sure you check the box that says my video has spatial audio and save that as, as a file called video uh, final video underscore injected dot mov. Now that is actually the file. The injected file is the one that you must upload to YouTube. If you don't upload the injected one, the video will not be 360 and it won't have the ambisonic sound effect on YouTube. So, but that now you reach the final step, that video is ready to go. So the injected final video injected file is the, is the one that you want to upload. Let's go into YouTube and simply click the upload button and drag that final video injected in there. Now, when you're uploading, it will take the normal time to upload, but after you've uploaded it, 
It will seem like it's live, but for some reason there will be no ambisonic sound. But don't worry, just wait like an hour or two, and then YouTube has, has to have time to process the video even more. Now, it's been a few hours later, the video is now ready, and when I was playing it back, you can kind of see that Zoom H2 in there in, in the picture when I spin around. Uh, when I played this video back, the, and I was wearing headphones, the ambisonic sound was in effect, and I could actually hear uh, different sound in my right and left ear, depending on the orientation of the view and also where I was standing around the room. So I'll put a link to this final video injected below so you can try it out. So that's the tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. And for more videos, please click the subscribe button below. Have a great day. And uh, please leave your questions below as well. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Have a great one. I'll talk to you later.